Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we have some information regarding the Apple M2 processor and basically we have tidbits on a dual chip CPU and maybe mass production beginning in Q3 of this year. So maybe that could be hinting at a November event. Also you might be wondering what exactly a dual chip CPU is. Well let's delve into all of that but first make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors and with that being said let's just tuck in. So all this info comes from our favorite cryptic leaker, Mr. Love to Dream, except he's not so cryptic on Weibo because basically on Twitter, he basically said dual SIP silicon. Now, initially I assumed SIP meant system in package. So clearly that's referring to AirPods and the Apple Watch, but that's not the case at all because on Weibo, he basically says this, Apple's first dual chip CPU, code name, I'll call it M2 dual first, two M2 SIP, and the other one rotated 180 degrees, which will start mass production in the third quarter of the year. Now, of course, do note, this is being translated from Chinese, so things could be lost in translation. But what I'm understanding is basically Apple's implementing a new dual chip CPU to the M2, and it should be going into mass production around Q3 of this year. So basically September time. So let's begin on this dual chip CPU. Now do note, I do not know anything about engineering and processors and all kinds of silicon stuff. So if you do actually know about that, let me know in the comments below what exactly this means. But of course, doing some brief research on Google, basically what I've learned is that dual chip CPU is basically two SOCs in one system and package. And basically you have a low powered CPU for the light stuff, which obviously is gonna be more battery efficient. And then a more powerful CPU for the heavier stuff that obviously isn't as battery efficient. Now, interestingly, the Oppo Watch uses this tech. And so that's why I assumed he was talking about the Apple Watch, but of course he clearly mentions in this Weibo post, it's the M2, so let's delve into what this could mean for the Mac. So Apple could implement this tech in two ways. They could either go the Oppo route and basically give us a low powered SOC on the sides and basically gives you as much battery life as possible when of course doing very light tasks like web browsing and watching YouTube. But the thing is, I kind of feel like that is a bit overkill because I believe the A14 can shut down cores when they're not needed to save battery life. And so surely Apple could just give us that instead of implementing this dual chip CPU. Though again, I have literally zero knowledge on all of this. So of course, maybe the fact is this is way more efficient for a larger product like the Mac. And so maybe the software could basically alternate between these two SOCs. And so if you're doing very light tasks, you could use the lower powered SOC and your Mac will last forever, which will of course be a huge benefit to many people. Another way of interpreting this is maybe we see two CPUs that are identical put together for additional performance, which is totally plausible, or maybe something is being lost in translation. And maybe what he actually means is something you guys suggested, which is basically Apple using a different die for the GPU and basically keeping the best parts of the M1, which is the fact everything is integrated. And so it's plausible this could be referring to maybe a dedicated GPU somehow being fused with the actual SOC. I have no clue what I'm on about. I could be completely wrong. So again, please feel free to correct me and add your thoughts on all of this because I am very interested to hear what you guys think. Oh, by the way, he also goes on about the chip being rotated 180 degrees. I have not a single clue what he's talking about. So, uh, yeah, there's that. But anyways, coming back to the two possibilities, I think it's the former, and that brings me on to my next point. Is this actually the M2 or the M1X? So you might remember a leak from a week ago regarding the M2 allegedly being in production. Now, of course, this information completely goes against that, but I do wanna say one thing, and that is Love to Dream hints at the fact the code name is M2 Dual First, and so that's clearly referring to the M2, whereas the report from Nikkei Asia Review basically says they have no idea what the name is, they just know a new chip is in the works and is going into mass production as we speak. And they tentatively call it the M2 because of course, M2 is easier to understand for some readers compared to M1X. And so basically what I think is that 
The chip in production right now is the M1X, and pretty much all the X variants of the M series processors are built for the higher end machines. So the higher end 14 inch, 16 inch, the bigger iMac, possibly the Mac Pro Mini, though I do think that might have its own chip, but basically the prosumer focused Macs, they get the X variants of the M series processors. But of course, the M2 and the M1, the basic number variants, of the M series processors are built for the entry level Macs. So basically that means that we could see the next generation MacBook Air, the base MacBook Pro, the base Mac Mini and the next variant of the base iMac get the regular M2 processor and of course, since these are entry level machines, clearly they won't have any dedicated GPUs. They're gonna be focused on efficiency since of course, the M2 is gonna be in Apple's most popular Macs, the base MacBook Pro and the base MacBook Air. And so that means that the idea of having a low powered SoC coupled with a more powerful SoC actually makes a lot of sense on these machines, and this could of course substantially improve the battery life with these new Macs. In fact, the Oppo Watch I mentioned before that has this dual chip CPU can last up to 21 days with the low powered SoC. And so while I'm sure your Mac won't be lasting you 21 days, it's possible that maybe we could see the Macs last maybe one or two days based on very light usage, especially using the more low powered SoC. Right, the final tidbit in this report is the fact the chip goes into mass production in Q3. So that gives us a rough timeline as to when we can expect new Macs. So basically I think that since Nikkei Asia believes the M1X could be in mass production right now and could be ready for July, I think we could see M1X debut at WWDC, so that's when we see the M1X, MacBook Pro, and iMac. And then, of course, M2 enters mass production around Q3, so around September, October time. And so, in my opinion, that perfectly aligns with a November event, much like we saw last year for M1. And since M2 does replace the M1, it makes sense in my opinion that Apple launches the new MacBook Air and the new MacBook Pro around the same time this year too. Though do note, much like I mentioned in a previous video that you can check out in the iCard above, of course Timothy did say there would be severe shortages in the second half of the year when it comes to the iPads and the Mac due to the global chip shortage. And so it is likely that maybe these Macs could get pushed back and maybe the M2 doesn't launch till next year. But that's about it for my thoughts on this leak. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Anyways, make sure to like and subscribe. For the latest Apple news and rumors, check out the video in the iCard above about AirPods 3 possibly launching this May. And on that note, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya peeps.